I won't be a slave. Oh, didn't you know never trust the wicked when the cards are on the table? They tell wickedy lies and fables. Unable to be dropping the prophecies like we be. Flipping off through the scriptures like Exodus 15 and 3. Ooh, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. How could you think to even add much more? Or is you lacking understanding? Because these pork chop preachers be lying but still demanding. Looting money from your pockets, though. But never to teach you when they reach you that the son of God's a so-called Negro. A bully gray afro and dark. That's what we step in to tear these lies apart. Scripture after scripture. You let it rip you if you wicked. The Israelites are coming from east into Pacific. Scholars are prolific with the scriptures like Solomon. All praises to the most high that he chose us. Now we end. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. As it is written, the truth is sitting inside of a simple mind of a holy nation that doesn't know that they're divine. So let us take this time to run the line on the future. Prophecy of how the devil seduced you. There's more religions than they're all pigeon dung, but none of these religions can tell you where you truly come from. This message is for the ones they call minority in the U.S. and get those up under Satan's authority. The last majority of my people don't have the true knowledge and understanding of the Bible that they're the Jews. That's why Christ and all the prophets have a dark complexion. So any foes of the facts don't have no protection. We make connection with the past with knowledge of the ever-present Bible to help my people with their suicidal tendencies because they tend to be led astray. We're looking for that one trade, headed for the payday. Here's a little song about the hidden truth. Come on. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another exciting edition of The Hidden Truth. I'm your host. I'm Priest Kazakia. With me today, I have Priest Tahawan Mayam. Shalom, brothers and sisters. And Priest Napash Pada. Okay. Um, once again, we're the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, we're located here in Houston, Texas at 80, 8524 South Braisewood. Uh, so please come by and check us out. We have classes Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, okay? And the focus of our show is to teach the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, everybody on this sign we have here, that you are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible, according to history that has been hidden from us. And our show is uh, focused on uh, raising these people up to the standard and come, uh, bringing us back to the Law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Okay, you brothers and sisters, you can check us out on YouTube at uh, Israelite School of Biblical History and Practical Knowledge. You can check us out on Facebook. Uh, uh, we're on there also, right? What, uh, under what? Um, Facebook, I, uh, Israelite School of Biblical History and Practical Knowledge, or ISBHPK. I okay. There you go. Uh, also, uh, inform them about the show changing times again right on the 17th that'll be our last saturday show uh the 20th the following tuesday we'll begin our uh every tuesday night on it from 8 30 to 9 30 p.m okay so that'll be the first show is uh the 20th okay all right so we're going to be changing our show times you brothers and sisters prepare for that uh if you have any questions or comments you can email us we've been getting a lot of positive email uh we thank you brothers and sisters for that uh um a lot of negative email too, but it's all good. It comes with the territory. So um, we're going to go into today's show. Today's topic, we're touching over um, why and how is the doctrine being changed and um, how, how this comes about and uh, what do these individuals that change the doctrine, what are they going through? But before we go into the topic, we want to touch on one of our questions uh, we get emailed a lot. A lot of brothers and sisters are asking about the beards. Right. They want to know, uh, you know, to be a priest, do you have to be a, have a beard? Or, or to, to, you know, believing in the knowledge, believing in the scriptures, do we have to have a beard? Mm -hmm. And uh, Or could you just shave it all off? You know what I mean? Be barefaced. So we're going to just touch on a few scriptures before we go into today's topic. Uh, and... and um, 
touch on this point really quick. So if you can go to Leviticus, let's go there really quick. Brothers and sisters, if you have any question, y'all can go ahead and hit me up right now. Uh, you can, uh, we're live. Uh, what's today? Today's the, uh, 26th. today's the 22nd, 26, 26th. Okay. You brothers and sisters can hit us live. We're in the studio right now. Hit, hit, uh, hit me up at 832-643-1359. If y'all have any questions or comments. Okay. Oh, I did forget our Ustream. We do have live Ustream classes. A lot of brothers and sisters that are out of town. That's not in Houston, Texas. They, uh, they go on there, check us out on Ustream at ISHB, uh, ISBHBK on Ustream, okay? So, going into today's topic, we're going to, or, or this question, before we go into the topic, we're talking about the beards. They want to know if it's okay to uh, cut your beard off, or do you have to grow a beard? So, we're going to go to Leviticus 19, verse 27, really quick. Go ahead, read that, brother. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Uh-huh. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Right, and very, uh, this is the dialogue, you know, when you get online, when you get on Facebook. Right. It's like, okay, yeah, it's talking about what the Africans used to do. Mar meaning to, like, basically cut in thy beard. Right, right. So, you know, which, which is true, which we are not supposed to, Follow the Africans. All right. But this goes beyond just the Africans, what they're doing. It was a tradition for Israel to have beards. Right. Right. So the whole point of the law was that we don't not only necessarily mar our beards, but we don't round our heads. And that's where you got the bowl cuts. I, I, we, I don't think we got any images of that. But we don't have supposed to have like, you know, the bowl cuts right. and uh, uh, flat tops. Right. And stuff like that. Yeah, when you deal with like the Buddhist monks and everything, they would uh, shave their whole head and uh, either burn or mark themselves with six dots on their forehead. Okay. Um, you you have the uh, the other Chinese traditions of shaving half of your head and pulling the rest back into mm -hmm. a ponytail. Um, as, as you see in these old kung fu movies and stuff, this was real life. This is what they did. Right. And uh, you know, even in India, in worship to the goddess Shiva, the women every year they'll cut and shave all their hair off. Right. Yeah. To the, to the point. Right, so like the image here, we don't supposed to do our heads like that. Right, right, the, the fades and things like that. Right. These were not Israelite customs. Right. We, we didn't do these things. Right. Um, so, you know, this was this is the, effem you know, as we went over that show, the effeminization right, of, right. Of, uh, of the black male. Right. The effeminization of the Israelite male. Well, what about when you go into, uh, it, you know, the thing about this is we're not touching on the bald, balding type. But it's different than brothers that are balding. Because if you go to the camera again, we got our brother right here. He's kind of balding on top. He, he's kind of balding on top a little bit. So, you know, he keeps his hair low, which it's, it's going to be bald. You know, that's natural. Right, right. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about, we're talking about, put, put, the, put the sign up again really quick. Right. Put the, see, we're talking about, uh, the scripture's telling you about, we don't supposed to do this. We don't supposed to do that with our beard. Right. We don't supposed to mar it to shape it or bowl our head like the Africans did. Right, right. And again, this is this is just an effeminate look. Right. Uh, it's, it's a super effeminate look right here with that that shaved face, smooth face uh, kind of look that that, that tells the, tells the woman she's gonna get uh she's gonna get her pleasure off. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. this right here is is not the way the Most High made us. Right. You know? To, to be cutting our heads up and in, in different things like that, and like I said, if you go into a lot of these uh, these pagan customs, right, they'll, they'll have this the, the typical marring of the head, right, right. See that? And uh, again, there's a lot of in a lot of um, ancient Asian customs, a lot of uh, uh, Polynesian and customs like that, they'll mar their heads up like this mm. and, and shape their shape themselves up into a design. Uh, to, to look so either fearsome or spooky to their enemies or whatever. Right, right. Now, once again, brothers and sisters, this is not the topic we're going over. We're just touching on this question for the brothers and sisters that have been emailing us about the, are we able to cut off our beards or should, or, or uh, shape our heads or, right. you know, because uh, you got the pastors, a lot of pastors and preachers, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't wear beards. Right. So we're just going to go through a few of these real quick. Leviticus 21 verse 5. Really quick. Um, Leviticus 21, verse 5. Go ahead. 
They shall not make baldness upon their head. Right. That, remember, this is this is not uh, natural baldness. Right. This is you. You don't supposed to shave your whole head bald. Right. Which most uh, most Judites or what you call so called black men. Right. Negro, the so called Negroes, they can attest to this. When you shave your head, when you shave your face. Right. The, the you'll get the bumps. You'll get right. The razor bumps. Okay. That's your body's way of telling you that's not a natural way for me. Right. Right. When you get the ingrown hair and the big pus bump and everything like that. Right. That's not a natural way for your body to. to absolutely. Work. Absolutely. And, and that's what your body is telling you when you start getting pock marks and. Right. You know, like seal, you know what I mean? You got the the pock, the deep pock marks and everything. Those are scars from you shaving. Right. You know what I mean? And Once again, this is uh, this is your this is you doing the baldness as opposed to like we got a, another brother here. He comes on here. He's naturally bald. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Right. And so you know, a natural baldness. The scripture tells you about that. He's forehead bald. Or right. He's not unclean. Right. So you know that you, you see this, but a lot of times when a man did this in the scriptures or it was done to a man. This was a shameful disgrace. Right. This was, a, you know, this was to shame him and make him look uh, effeminate or, or womanly. You know what I mean? To right. Either shave his entire beard off or to shave part of his hair off or you know, cut all of his hair off. Absolutely. You know, and even in the Japanese custom, they still carry that. They, they would have their top knot, you know, and if you cut that off, that was a disgrace to them. Absolutely. You know? Wow. Yeah, but um, in here, I was going to get the Zonder. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead. So Zonder Van Pictoria Bible Dictionary. All right. We're under uh, beard. Mm -hmm. And it says uh, beard with Asiatics, which is what Hebrews will fall under, a badge of manly dignity. Mm. So just like you wouldn't go up to a cop and expect him to take his badge off or, or expect to go ahead and use black marker and, and scratch off, you know, uh, parts of his badge. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing. You wouldn't do this to a man. You wouldn't come and tell him right. to mar his face up. Right, right. Cut parts of his beard off. Right. It said it was a badge of manly dignity mm -hmm. in contrast to the Egyptians. Wow. So once again, the Most High put in that separation between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Wow. Right. I said, uh, who usually shave the head and face as a sign of mourning. It was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. So if you were in mourning. Mourning, uh, right. During mourning time, you could do that. Exactly. Exactly. Now, kind. Just like they put the term black on us. Right. That, 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 was, that meant mourning, gloomy. Uh, um, um, Suppress. Sad, right. Sullen. Mm -hmm. Right. So they put that on us because they want that image. They want that name on us about being sad and in mourning. And then when they tell us to cut our face, shave your face for work. Right. If you want to work here, you got to shave. And right, because we, we know that this society is an effeminate, right. effeminate society. Right. So uh, that's what they try to have you tap into. And that's why, you know, brothers like ourselves and uh, brothers with beards like this, they, they don't want to... <laughs> They don't want you to look like that. It's too masculine. Right, right. You know? And I'm, I'm going to continue real yeah. quick. It says, uh, um, as a sign of mourning, it was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. Mm -hmm. The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of their beards. Wow. Probably because it was regarded as a heathenish sign. Uh, so the other nations would do these things. Right. Uh, to compel a man to cut off his beard was to inflict upon him a shameful disgrace. Mm -hmm. So again, if you if you were to even ask somebody to do that, it was the same as uh, asking them to become a homosexual. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Or, or asking them to to do some uh, the standard. The most high. Right? This is the standard of the Most High. This is the standard of a man according to the Most High, according to the Scriptures. Right. And we got to remember we were created in His image. Right. So in His image and His likeness. So to have that look. That's the image of the Most High. Absolutely. I mean, the man, like when we read in uh, Corinthians, the man is the glory, of, you know, of the Most High. The right. Most High was we made. He was made us in His image to to show His glory on earth. So we we can't mar our face up and right. make look different than the image He created us in. Right. Right. Uh, go. You finish? Yep. yep. Okay. So that that's powerful. That's powerful. And that was out of the uh, Zondervan. Right. Right. The Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary. Okay. Finish that up, and then we'll go to Revel uh, Romans twelve and two really quick. Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. Mm -hmm. They shall not make baldness upon their head, mm -hmm. neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Just like you were saying, right? right. The, the, because this was the, the heathenistic customs. Right, right. So no, we didn't walk around with... Be See, and this is, once again, you know, we, we always go through this. You got so many young brothers and new doctrines coming out, you know, and um, it comes from... A bro it comes from men, and this is going to go into today to today's topic. It comes from men wanting to still do what they were doing in the world. Right, right. Mm -hmm. 
you know, they, it wants them, they want to, instead of go, Romans 12 and 2, let me just get that. And it's got to make it even a little more clear. Go ahead. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh-huh. And be not conformed to this world. And that's what they want to do. Right. They want to engraft you being a man of the scriptures, but still have that worldly presence. Right. Double Dutch. Yeah, double Dutch. So I want to I wanna be a man of the most high, but I want to appeal to the world. Right, right. You know, and, 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 and be won by them. Right. You know, in, in all aspects, it ain't going to be that easy. You know, it ain't going to be that easy for you to carry the customs of the Most High, to carry the character of the Most High, and then go into the world and be liked. Right. The Most High said you should be hated of the world. Right. Right. Go ahead. And be, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. And that renewing of the not mind is, once again, putting on the laws, right. putting on the character right. of the Most High. And that's where these, uh, these customs are done away with. Right. The shaving of your beard off, the tattoos, the, you know, which a lot of brothers that come in the knowledge, they come in with tattoos and, you know, we don't tell them, oh, go get those laser removed, but they know, okay, from now on, I don't get tattoos or from now on, I don't shave my head like that. Now on, I don't shave my beard like that. I got to have a beard. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, we're, you know, just touching on this, this, I don't want this to be the whole show. So let's go to Leviticus 20, uh, uh, let, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 21, 13. Like I said, I don't want to take the whole show on this topic. We just wanted to answer this question. We've been getting emails about it, and a lot of people are wondering if it's okay to shave your beard off, and is it, is, is it a custom of a man of the Bible? Mind you, I say that because this ain't got nothing to do with religion. This got to do with when you read through the scriptures, what did we do according to the knowledge? And what we did was we wore our beards. And if you're trying to follow the ways of the knowledge, the ways of the scriptures, and come back to who you are, especially you Hebrew Israelite men, you're going to wear your beard. Read that. 1 Samuel 21, 13. 1 Samuel 21, 13. Uh -huh. And he changed his behavior before them. Uh -huh. And fiend himself mad in their hands. Go ahead. He scrabbled on the doors of the gate. Right. Now, this is talking about David right. when he was opposing like he was a madman. Right, right. Right. Go ahead. And let his spittle fall down upon his beard. No, upon his soft, tender face. Upon his beard. Upon his wet, wet, buttery lips. Upon his beard. <laughs> he had a beard. Right, right. David had a beard. Right. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't shave his beard off. Why? Because it was a custom of the Hebrews to have their beards. I wish we had that picture of the statue they did, the, the one they supposedly made called David. You know what I mean? Michael, I think uh, Michelangelo or something made it, but they got him they got him up there butt naked and just all smooth everywhere. Wow. And that's a complete contradiction to what the scriptures just showed. Exactly. He had a, he had a beard. He Check had a beard. that out. Right. Second Samuel 10 and 4 really quick. Second Samuel 10 and 4, and then we're going to go to Isaiah 50 verse 5. And we're going to get these out of there real quick for this uh, individual that's asking these questions. Go ahead. Second Samuel 10 and 4. Go ahead. Wherefore, Hanan took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. So this is what happened when David sent his men out uh, to, uh, to one of the kings, if I'm correct. And um, to disgrace him, he, he took his servant, right. the man that he sent to him, and shaved half of his beard. Right. David sent him out in peace right. to go talk to him. And he, the king took him as spies. Right. He sent them back, shaved, shaved off half of their half of their head because it was a disgrace. Right. <laughs> why? Why? Why is the beard? You now nowadays they'd be like, okay, I'll just shave it all off. Right. Right. But back then that was a real big thing. You're like, you, you're gonna shave half of my beard? You're gonna disgrace me. Go ahead. Read on. Uh, Second uh, Samuel's ten and four. And I'll read on, and it says, and cut off their garments in the middle. Even it says even to their buttocks uh, and sent them away. And when he t when he told it unto David, he sent he sent me to meet them. He sent excuse me. He sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown right. so and you, then return. You weren't even acceptable being around society. With your with half of your beard cut like that. Exactly. Right. So the character of Israel, we wore our beards. Right. 
Right. It was a disgrace for you to have uh, your, your face shaven. Right. You know what I mean? But we're going to go into uh, how much of a beard also. Read Isaiah 50 verse 5 really quick. Isaiah 50 for f verse 5. Let's read that. I don't know if I can throw this in while he's yeah. doing that, but uh, this is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 16, I'm sorry, um, chapter 19 and verse 29. It says, a man may be known by his look and a man and one that hath understanding by his countenance mm. when you meet him. So this is how we knew that a person had understanding was their countenance is showed on their face. It showed that they were that they were wise and they were dignified by having that beard, mm. by having that stern look and not having a goof troop look on their face or or some wild abandoned look in their face. No, this man had a beard. He had understanding. All right. It said a man's attire and excessive laughter and gait show what he is. So if you want to shave all your face off and be real smooth like the, like right. the little R&B guys that, that want to please their women, uh, you know what I mean, that want to please them orally, then you be that. But that's what you're going to be known as. You're going to be known as the little young-faced, uh, ruddy-faced man. Right. And you're going to be looked at as young. They're not going to come right. as wis for wisdom. Right, right. You know? Because that's, that's the whole reason why you don't have a beard. Right. Is because it shows you the difference between a boy and you coming into your manhood. Right, your youth. A lion with his mane. Right. And then the next step past, you know, taking it off, if you can, you know, so you see the difference between this man, even though he's wearing the little pink hat, but you see the difference between this man and his look as opposed to the previous brother. Like, you see this man, brother, he looked like a warrior. Yeah, he looked like he want, like he's going to hit you on that field and hurt you. Right, right. And that's why they do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't want they don't want that intense look. They don't want that that uh that look that feminizes them and makes them feel like feminine. It, it's sad. It's sad that uh Rick Ross had to bring the beard back in. Right. right. <laughs> of, all, of all people. Yeah, of all people. Rick Ross had to bring the beard back in instead of, you know, men of the scriptures being the example. Right. You know what I mean? Because brothers been wearing their beards ever since they can grow them. Right. Right. But, you know, to us, you, you know, the, until society uh, assimilates. You know what I mean? Then, then it's looked down upon. A woman don't want. I want somebody. I want somebody smooth face and tender lipped. Right, right. You know. And if y'all could put that last picture up, real yeah. quick. Yeah. That uh, that one you just had up there. Um, the, no, the last one with the smooth face, man. Him. Uh, the next step past this is you're wearing lipstick. You're putting on a. You're putting on foundation. Right. You're you're, you're shaping up your eyebrows. You know? Right, right. And and you're walking through the mall like a lot of these people in the malls we work at. Right. And Absolutely. Your, your, your shoulders are thrown back, and your and your chest is pushed out, and you're and you're and you're walking with a switch now, right? Because you look, you you've already adopted this look from the foundation. Exactly. You know, you've already adopted that effeminate look. Let's get one more, and then we're we we'll stop it on that. Hopefully, we answer this brother's question. Isaiah fifty verse five. Isaiah chapter fifty verse five. Uh huh. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Right. Now, listen, this is a prophecy of Christ. Right. This is him prophesying of Christ. Not only Isaiah, but this is him prophesying of Christ. Go ahead. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Right. So it says, and my cheeks to the to them that plucked off the hair. Right. What a, if you got hair on your cheeks, you have a beard. Right. Christ had a beard. Right. <laughs> and then look, one more. Right. Okay, there you go. That's the next, next level. Guy, Psalms 133 and 1. We got to do that one, and yeah. then we're done with that. This guy's already a known homosexual right here. Right. So, you know what I mean? This, this is the next level. Now, now, this is the progression of what you're doing to yourself. You've shaped yourself up to, to look more uh, Egyptian or American. Uh, you've cut off all the hair off. Well, we know he's a sodomite. That's what I said. He's a known homosexual already, confessed and, and proud. Um, and but this is the next step. You're you're this, and then next thing you know, you're you're wearing dresses and you're shopping at a uh, Charlotte Russe for your for your next manly garment. Wow. You know? <laughs> wow, Charlotte Russe, huh? Okay, grow that. Read that Psalms 133 and one. Psalms 33 and one. 133 and one. 133 and one. Psalms 133 and one, and we go ahead and uh, end it with that. Just we do want to answer the brothers and sisters questions so we're trying to push that in a little bit because right, they're seeing this on the streets you know yeah certain brothers going out and teaching and having themselves all smooth faced and right marred up and everything like that and that's not and the standard it's like it's they want to drag 
worldly stuff into the truth and be like, this is the standard. Go ahead, read that. Psalms 133 and 1. Read. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh-huh. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. Right. That went down to the skirts of his garment. Right. So Aaron's beard went down to the skirts of his garment. <laughs> so Israelites... Hebrew Israelites, we understand this, this Christian doctrine, okay? They, they want shaved face to assimilate to the world. Yeah, right. But Israelites, Hebrews, we wore our beards. Yeah, right. You read that all through the scripture. So uh, we wanted to answer that question for the brothers and sisters. Okay, we're good with that. And uh, I want to go into, right into today's topic. We're talking about, you know, where these different doctrines come from and how they come about. You know, and... and um, you know, where brothers and si uh, where brothers, uh, you know, get this from and, and why why does this spirit overcome them? So really quick, go to Hebrews 5, verse 12. And I know we got 30 minutes, so we're going to try to push this in here. Uh, brothers and sisters, we're live here. We're live here uh, Saturdays till the 17th right. till the 17th. So look out for us after the 17th on at uh, Tuesdays at 830, right? right, right. 830 to 930. Read that. At Hebrews 5, verse 12, and then we're going to go to Titus 1 and 9. Go ahead. Hebrews 5, verse 12. Uh -huh. for, when, for, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Right, and that's when you look at what the Most High, every man has to go through. They need to be taught. All of us, we had to be taught a standard. Uh, you know, our elders, they, when you looked at them in the street, you look at all the old uh, elder videos, they got them on daily motion. You, know, you never hear your Shire, Shar, you never hear these brothers out there cursing out people, right. like all, you know, just using foul language. You never hear that. Right, right. That ain't the standard. Right. We don't supposed to be doing that. Professionalism. Pro professionalism. And the scriptures tell you, don't do that. Filthy right. communication, it tells us. Right? So we were taught a standard. Read. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk. Go ahead. And not of strong meat. So the, the scriptures is telling us we go through stages. We go through the milk stage and we go through the meat stage. And the milk representing the baby, the child. Right. And everybody has to go through that. Everybody has to learn the standards. Yeah. But as we see that brothers changing those standards, uh, they change that code. They change that, the, the things that we're supposed to be sticking by. Right. And uh, like we're talking about, we're talking about the beard. Uh, go to Titus 1 and 9. We're talking about the beard. We're talking about, um, you know, putting on your garments. Um, what, what, other, what other things that they change? Uh, uh, Satan has a wife. Like, that, that's not what you were taught. Right, right. Uh, beat your wives. That's okay to beat your wives. Um, oh, what else we got? Oh, we all need to get, go to Egypt. Like, you didn't learn that. Right, right. Where did this come from? Why are these things coming from? Not, they're not canon. They're not scriptures. You know what I mean? Where did this come from? So read that, Titus 1, verse 9, really quick. Titus 1, verse 9. Uh-huh. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. As what? As he had been taught. So we're supposed to hold fast what we've been taught. Right. And when you look at all these brothers, and we know, I know most of them, and know of most of them, they know a standard. They have a standard right, right. of what they were taught. A foundation. So, you know something that's immovable. When you when you deal with a when you deal with the word of the Most High, when you deal with anything that you're going to join, you want a foundation. You know what I mean? If you're, right. Whether you're dealing with a group or you're dealing with a business, you want a foundation there that that's immovable. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, because you don't want the one minute you you done built up all this tower into the sky. Right. And then oh hey your foundation's cracked. Uh, this is flawed or this this uh you should have got counsel on how to build this part. You know right. I mean? Right. And now the whole building is is messed up. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what's going on with a lot of these these false doctrines is they're they're going and they're taking that foundation. They're they're uh they're not building an, the same foundation mm -hmm. when they want to build. Their they're building when they go out to start their there you go there you so go what happens is they build this tower in the sky of all these brothers and then they start and then the brothers are looking and saying wait a minute this is not that, right that's not what yeah. you know we we didn't we didn't learn that man we right. weren't taught that we weren't shown that uh uh the micro trip was uh the micro trip is the mark of the beast right that's carnal minded right not that, saying that 
to not get not it. saying to go get a microchip. Let's right. get that out the way. Right, right. Not saying we're all going to get microchips, but that's not scripture. The scriptures are telling you something spiritual because right. you're trying to tell me a homosexual doesn't got a mark of the beast. Right. He has a mark of the beast, a drug pedophile, dealer, right. a pedophile, a drug dealer, a murderer. They got the mark of the beast right. and they didn't need a computer chip. So right. uh, where did you get this from? You know what I mean? Uh, the Hebrew, uh, you know, uh, uh, we got to take every yah out of all the Hebrew. Oh, right, like, right. where did you get this from? Read that scripture again really quick. I oh. know we got a caller, but to get these scriptures out, we got to have to hold, put them on hold real quick. You can text me and I'll uh, text me. Put the number up and he can text me. Go ahead. Read Titus, Titus 1 and 9 again. Titus 1 and 9. And then we're going to go to Philippians 1 verse 15. Titus 1 and 9. Uh -huh. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Right. We're supposed to be holding fast the faithful word that we've been taught. Mm -hmm. And what these brothers and uh, a lot of brothers don't understand is that when Ari, when the elders, when whatever elders was on point, they were on point. The spirit worked through them. Right, right. And when they were off, the spirit stopped dealing with them. Right. We know that because they start coming with all fiends. Right. But as the spirit opened things up and started edifying through these men, the Holy Spirit working through them, we got to remember it wasn't man. Right. So we're supposed to stick to what we were taught and shown and revealed and hold fast to that. Right. Like when you read about Saul, when he got the spirit on him, mm -hmm. they would say, is, is Saul one of the prophets? Right. Why? Because he held the same standards. He's taught the same things. He there you said go. the same things. That's why they thought he was as one of the prophets. Right. He stopped acting like the king and started acting like the prophets. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's what these brothers aren't understanding is in order to keep that standard and keep that tradition and keep that, that, that way and that foundation, you got to keep to what was taught to you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that, that's where this confusion comes in. And that's where any, any brother online now, they think they can go in and change the scriptures. Right. They can add to the doctrine and take away and, and not understand that. Uh, we're going to go through it. I don't want to jump ahead. Read on. That he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Right. That's why a lot of brothers ain't convincing. Right. Because you're not sticking to no standard. You, you, you got the knowledge. And we know, listen, we know what's going on here. Right. We know Satan and the FBI and the CIA and these people see the, the word. That's getting out that you so-called Negroes, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, that us Israelites, how the word is being spread. And we know a lot of them are creating this confusion. Right, right. Because I already know that some of these people that are saying they're Israelites, there's no way you can be an Israelite and think and go up against your people like you're a killer or a thug or a, a, a gremlin. Right, right. Because we're unifying. Right. You know what I mean? When they, so, you know, and we've been over that before about the gang mentality. But the thing is that we know they can't be in an Israelite state of mind. Right. It, they got to be about division. And, and the only one that deals with th that type of division is Satan. Right. You know what I mean? So go to Philippians, uh, Philippians 1 verse 15 really quick. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Uh-huh. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Right. And this is where... Where this is where the knowledge is edifying us and letting us know where does the doctrine change? Well, you got brothers that come into the body or a camp and they get in this camp and they don't like, oh, you know what, brother, uh, your hair's low or brother, you, you don't got too many fringes on or brother, uh, I don't like this or I want to still follow this in the world. So I'm going to take what I got from you, take the knowledge because I know it's the truth. But I'm going to go out there and change a little bit. Right. And then he goes and changed a little bit and was un he was unworthy and he didn't stick to what he was taught. And then he gets another brother and teaches him that un that that veering, that swaying mentality. Right. A, a light skinned brother stole my girl. So all light skinned brothers aren't Israelites. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now only dark skinned brothers are Israelites. You know what I mean? So now we're going to take out all the other nine and a half tribes. And you're only uh, Israelite if you're dark skinned. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start my own camp where where only dark skinned people are Israelites. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, that kind of mentality. But it's it's always personal. Like it says, envy is not something that has to do with uh, it's not something that has to do with your, your the things that go on in the camp and you're being uh, offended by the word. 
You know what I mean? Like the scriptures say, by and by, by the word, he's offended. Right. No, envy has to do with you not liking some person. Right. I mean, you have a personal grudge or a personal uh, thing that they have that you don't. That's what envy has to do with. Is, is these people are teaching Christ out of envy is what the scripture is showing. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to read the text because I think it's a comedic. Uh, I find it slightly ironic that you were talking about homosexuals while at the same time saying how much you, uh, how, it says how, how what you much more prefer a man to have a beard than a uh, clean shaven face. Okay, brother. All right, for you simple-minded brothers out there, first of all, we're not saying we don't we don't prefer no man. I got women. We deal with women, brother. We're we're saying the standard of the Most High. So I just wanted to answer his right. <laughs> comment since he did text. Or she, or whatever. So, uh, going back to the point, uh, where uh, where are we at right now? Uh, Philippians. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Philippians chapter one. Yeah, Philippians verse one verse fifteen. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. Go ahead. And some also of goodwill. Right, and some also of goodwill. Right. Good so, intentions. Good intentions. Right. You know, and that's what we're supposed to be sticking with. That's the standard. Right, right. The standard is we're supposed to be raising up Israel. We're supposed to be raising up our people right. with that right standard. Right. Not a striving, not I want to create create a fight or battle. Right. Or I just want people to follow me. You right. Know I mean? I there you go. To follow me and not this brother. Right, exactly. I exactly. Go ahead. Read on. Verse 16. Uh -huh. The one preach Christ of contention. Read. Not sincerely. Right. So this is where. We know that this misdirection comes in. Right, right. And that's why, you know, we make it a point to try to show brothers and sisters that uh, they have to they have to study. Right. You know what I mean? Because the confusion comes in where you get, like I said, you get somebody from the world coming up with, oh, I still want to smoke weed. Right. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say I'm an Israelite. I'm going to put on the apparel. I'm going to put on the beard. But then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, oh, you can smoke weed. Right. Why? Because it's from the earth. You know it's what I natural. mean? It's natural. You know, the most high gave it to us. Right. So it's that type of mentality, them still trying to engraft worldly things right, right. into the truth. Right. So now you, you created striving. Right. You created confusion. You created fighting. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's because of men's lust. Right. It's men's desire. Yeah, they're trying to bring they uh they they sort of sort of uh a memory foam mattress into First the Corinthians battlefield. Three. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like I want to still be able to sleep on a nice comfort level. Right. But I but I want to be I want to say I'm in the truth on the front line. Right. Exactly. And and, and those two don't mix. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you see it all through there. It's like yeah. they're trying to teach with the while they high, or they trying to you know come to class while they're high. It doesn't mix. Right. That the most high is not about that. Right. For First Corinthians three verse three, brother, read that. For ye are yet carnal. It, right, and that's where this comes from. Right. You can tell brothers that are carnal minded. Because like you said, or it, well, if you ain't of ISBHPK, uh, it, is that not, we don't say that, but it's that type of mentality. Right, right. It's like if you're not doing what we're doing, you know what I mean? You ain't in the truth. Well, guess what? Christ had the 12 apostles. He had the 70 secret apostles. And then he had people teaching. Then he had people teaching. He wasn't with. Right. But they, he's told them, go ahead and teach. let them teach. Right. Right, right, right. The example was you have these men teaching over there in the name of Christ. Right. You know what I mean? Well, do, they're not rolling with us. Do we go over there, stop them and argue with them and fight with them? And, right, right. You know what I mean? Let them know, listen, brother, this is off. This is off. Right, right. You know, no, let them do what they're doing. Right. And that's what the Most High is telling us. Read that. First Corinthians 3 and 3. For ye are yet carnal. Right. And it comes from that carnal mind. And um, uh, look up. Do me a favor, sister. Look up, the, look up that carnal, uh, because when you look up the word carnal, it shows you, man, right. it's fleshly. Right. These men are geared towards their pride. They're geared towards, uh, you know, puffing themselves up. Well, let me, let, let me let you know something, brothers and sisters. This truth ain't about us. Right. This truth is bigger than us. It's about raising and teaching our nation to get the hell up out of this homosexual society, right, this right. transvestite, this, this, you know, backside busters, <laughs> bull dykes, this filthy society. Right, right. This ain't about us or just this camp. It's about every brother and sister out there, and we're supposed to be upholding a strong example. Right. But where do these things come from? Read it again. 
for ye are yet carnal. Read. For where is there there is among you envying. There is envying, go ahead. And strife. And what? And strife. Right. You know there's strife because you got a brother on TV talking about another brother. We're supposed to be teaching Israel. Right, right. You know what I mean? Forget about going at another brother. Right. Let's raise our standard. Right. Put away the strife. Put away the envying. Right. Read. And division. And what? And division. Put away the division. Read. Are ye not carnal? And walk as men. Right. And are ye not carnal relating to physical, especially sexual, right? Carnal desire, sensual, erotic, lasciviousness, lustful. Libidinous, See? lecherous, licentious. There right? you go. Right. And uh, that's the thing is, uh, you know, as I was looking at that scripture, it's the same as the other scripture. It starts out with that envy. Right. You know what I mean? And like, like there's another scripture that says, uh, through envy of the devil came to right. the world. Yeah. And that's what happens in, in, amongst the world of Israel that because of envy. You know what I mean? Because of envy of that man's power, that man's uh, position. And I don't have that position. Right. I got to start me a new camp. I got to find something to create strife about. Right. With this man. Right. You know I mean, I know it's wrong for me to pull away and, and, and forsake the assembling of myself together and doing these things. That's wrong. So I have to find a reason that I'm going to strive with this man. Right. Like we you know were I mean? talking about today when brothers come from other camps and, you know, they want to join us. Right. You know, my question is, well, why are you leaving these brothers if they're not worshiping Baal? Right. Because nobody's perfect. Right. Right. You know what I mean? You're coming to the camp and that's fine, brother. But the brothers over there doing the work, too. We're doing the work. We're all doing the work. Right, right. So why are you leaving? If they're not saying they're, if they're, not saying they're the Holy Ghost right. and they're King David and the, the Holy Spirit, we are going to fall short in certain aspects. Right. We will fall short. We're not. No one's perfect. But at the same time, um, what are you using and what is it that you don't like? Because you come in our camp, you're going to get busy. It's about getting work getting this work done, teaching our people, raising up our nation. Right, right. It ain't about sitting on your butt, being at home, and talking mess about everybody. Right, right. We got to get busy, man. Whether you see us in the street, on the cable show, whether you see us you know, in class, it's about the work of the Most High, counseling brothers, raising our nation up. Right, right. You know, that's what we're supposed to be doing, not with this carnal mind of fighting and arguing. We're not about that. Stop calling me with that. Right, you know what right. I mean? Right. You know, that's why a lot of these questions, we, we answer them, but we know that they're just going to create arguments. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like on Facebook, I just want to argue with you. I don't want to edify. I don't want to learn nothing. I want to argue with you. You know what's interesting? When I was just thinking as you were talking, but uh, when you look about David, right? Saul was off. Mm -hmm. But David didn't come over there and bang on him and, there and you go. try to win everybody over to his side. He was like, that's the anointed king of Israel. Yep. You, you don't touch him. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's his position. You leave that there. You know what I mean? That whatever the most high established, that's what it is. Right, right. You know what I mean? He didn't come over there and try to try to subtly win the people over right. to him. Right, exactly. All that. No, he just, okay, whatever he tells me to do. He I'm didn't try do. to defame his name. Right, right. So where are these brothers getting that from? Right. That's madness, man. Right, right. Go, uh, I want you to read verse 4, and then you're going to go to Galatians 6, verse 3. And uh, let me see what we got here. Uh, we got some questions. Uh, I, can, I can turn the channel. Can I come get an autograph or something, man? Would you like... Okay, uh, Power Ranger. Okay. All right. We got jokes. Uh, we got grown men. They need attention. Right. I'm not going to answer that. Go ahead. <laughs> First Corinthians Cartoon chapter 3, character. verse 4. Uh-huh. For a while, one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollo. Right. So one saith, I'm of Paul, and then, uh, you know what? Hold on a second. I know why he got mad, because he don't got a beard, and we brought out scriptures on that, and he looked at himself in the mirror and realized... Damn, I'm effeminate. Right. So now he's trying to uh, he's trying to uh, mock, mock. It's and, a and joke. As, as young as he sounds, we're not saying that to people who haven't grown in a beard yet. Right, Hopefully right, right. Your young mind hasn't gotten offended by that. If you haven't grown a beard yet, then that it's going to come. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> right. A, they're naturally smooth faces. The tribe of Gad, the Native Americans, a lot right. of them, they haven't grown it in yet. It's not a disgrace that you haven't grown it right, in. Right, right, yeah, because it wasn't. It wasn't to hurt your feelings. Right, right. Yeah, you know I mean, we were talking about the beards because the person asked a question about uh, if you should wear your beard. Right. You know what I mean? Should you cut it off? Right. Should you? Um, I mean, right. Should you cut it off, or uh, d uh, is it okay to uh, do designs and all that stuff? Right, so right. it was nothing personal. Right. If you got in your feelings, brother, uh, go ahead, read. Are ye not carnal? Right. No, no, no. W where are we at now? 
We no, had Galatians uh, six and three or First Corinthians. First Corinthians uh, three. No, th First Corinthians three and four. Go three ahead. Four. Uh, for while one saith, "I am of Paul," and another, "I am of Apollos." Go ahead. Are you not carnal? Right. So, you know, this is where this carnal contention comes from. Right, right. You know, it shows that that young mind, that young mentality, that because I want to argue, I want to fight. You know what I mean? It's it's the worldly mentality. Are people hating on what what we're doing that's supposed to build each other? Right. We're supposed to be building each other, not trying to break each other down. Right, right. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the the scriptures is already gonna hurt your feelings. Right, right. Like you see how we we just answered a question about a beer. We weren't talking about nobody, but the scriptures hurt their feelings. So we don't have to go the extra mile and, and feed into the, the emotions of this individual. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get that a lot. We got to shun away from that. Uh, go from there. It says, for, for while one saith I am of Paul and another say I have of Apollos. It says, are ye not carnal? Right. And that, but that's the point that it's not about did priest Thahawam teach you? Right. Did uh, priest Kazaki teach you? Wait a minute. He he. I'm I'm of I'm of Thahawam. I'm of Kazaki, or I'm of this camp. I'm the of that camp, brother. That's division. That's carnal minded. Right, right. You know what I mean? It says one planteth, one water. If the Most High giveth the increase, right. is your basis? We're just tools, man. Yeah, like is your basis the scriptures? You know what I mean? Right. Is is what they say lining up with what's in the Bible? We're just tools, I. Right. We're just tools. This is our job is to share the word. To raise up our people, man, like Paul said, and hopefully we can save some of them. Go to Galatians 6, verse 3, really quick. Galatians 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Right. Read it again. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing. Right. We are tools. Right. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. So the topic of the show is... Where do these doctrines come from? You know where it comes from? Brothers and their feelings mm -hmm. and their carnal emotions uh, uh, and not sparing the flock. I got more scriptures and I'm trying to get so many out, but not sparing the flock. Right, right. They're the grievous wolves that their, their goal is about money, is about the, the wrong achievement. They're coming from the world. And they're coming with this knowledge. I want to be seen of men. I want to be seen of men. I want to glory of men. I'm such and such. It is not about us. Yeah. And the most I say, you're going to have your reward. Men are going to praise you. They're right. going to follow you because they're stupid. They're, they, he didn't call a sheep for nothing. You know what I mean? The sheep, they go wherever the, the shepherd wants them to go. Right. You know what I mean? uh, wherever, wherever you lift yourself up as a shepherd, they're going to say, okay, we'll follow that. As Case in point, uh, these idiots following T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, right. uh, uh, Joel Osteen, Smiley. You know what I mean? They're they following these men. You can see our people are retarded. So they're going to follow wherever, you know what I mean? Where, right. Wherever you send them. But that's the thing is you don't lift yourself up just because you got people to follow you. Right. You know what I mean? You lift them yourself. You, you let Christ and other men praise you. Right. And you keep doing the work of the most high. And that's what's going to make you great. Right. You know what I mean? Not saying, you know, if it ain't. A, there's so many camps doing great things out there. Right. I go online and I, yes, there are some young brothers that. Still need to work on a lot of stuff. Yeah. But you look at all the greatness and how the word's getting out there, man. You got a lot of mature brothers doing things. Right. You know what I mean? So you don't need to lift yourself up. Right. You know what I mean? Like if it ain't coming from your camp, it ain't the truth. Come on, man. The Most High has endowed men throughout the world right. with the truth of the Most High. Right. Uh, so go from there. Uh, read on. Read that one more time. Galatians 6 and 3. Galatians 6 and 3. For uh -huh. if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing. He deceiveth himself. You deceive yourself. If I think I'm something, because uh, like the scriptures say, we're worms. Right. We're nothing, Ock. Right. So for us to think we're somebody and that we're going we're gonna, to uh, that, that we're gonna actually get away with lifting ourselves up, the Most High will snatch all that from you. All right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He will snatch all those things from you, man. So men, we have to be humble like Christ was humble and stop being puffed up. Right. Read on. Verse 4, uh -huh. but let every man prove his own work. Get busy. Yep. That's why I said, uh, like, a lot of argumentative things, I'm not going to go through that. 
We're going to teach Israel. There's a lot of young brothers and sisters, Israelites throughout the world, man, that's still in the ghettos, in the slums, on crack, on dope. We got brothers, new sisters coming to school. They got mental Ill, Ill, uh, illnesses, problems, right. emotional problems, anger problems, weed problems, drunkard problems. Right, right. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, if they don't come in with their full fringes, we... Right. They'll get that. Right, they, right. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen. What I'm saying is they will get that. Right. You know what I mean? So, but the, this is what Paul's saying. Prove your own work. Right. Get busy. Let your work shine. Let, let us shine through that. Right. And that's where we're going to shine to all the nations, where it says in Deuteronomy 14, 2, that this will be your wisdom in sight of all nations. Right, right. Go ahead. Verse, uh, verse 4. Um but let every man prove his own work, mm -hmm. and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. There you go. Wait a minute. That you're going to lift yourself up? He shall have rejoicing in himself alone. No, you're going to let brothers go out and be like, if it's not of Kazakia, it ain't of the truth? He shall have rejoicing in himself alone. Yeah, I'm going to rejoice in myself. Right. There's because no truthfully, I don't want no man to rejoice, to, to give me praise. You're right. taking my honor. Right. I want my praise from the most high. I want mine done in secret. Right, right. So this is what we're br brothers that's teaching brothers that's trying to teach. This is how we supposed to think. Right. We don't, let, listen to what Paul's saying. Check this out. Philippians go from there. Oh, re finish that. Go ahead. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone uh -huh. and not in another. Check that out. Go to Philippians two verse three. Philippians two verse three. Uh huh. Let nothing be done through strife. Wait, wait a minute. Let everything be done through arguing and fighting and, 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 and battling. Let nothing be done through strife. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When we get out there, we got to just create chaos. Let nothing be done through strife. Read. Or vainglory. Or what? Vainglory. Or what? Vainglory. We don't supposed to be about striving and battling. We supposed to be trying to win our people. Like I said, the word already right. is going to cut them to the heart. Right. And that's what Christ did. Right. And if I, if I could just break these words down. Let yes, no... Sir thing <laughs> right no thing you know what i mean be done through strife or let's break this word down vain glory useless glory wow you know what i mean that oh yeah i got i got patted on my back well what good is that going to do you in the kingdom absolutely you know i mean oh this 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 woman wants to jump on me because of the because i'm i'm so knowledgeable well so what what is Christ? Is Christ gonna pin a gold star for every woman right. who jumped on you? Right. You know what I mean? Is 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 the is the Most High gonna give you give you glory for every man that decided that you were the you were the stuff? You know what I mean? Right. Like, and you were somebody he wanted to be like. You were a great orator. You were a great speaker. Right. Right. This is this is listen. Remember, this ain't even our wisdom. Yeah. This ain't man's wisdom. Right. This is the Most High's wisdom. Yeah. You a simp if you take credit for that. Right. Because the old men, all of us, we all come. All of us come for the streets. Right. In all Israel, we know you came from the streets. Right. So we know what the old man's about. A knucklehead, a thug, a, a, a nigga that will shoot you in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You get your head kicked in, uh, you get high, get sweet, pop pills, all that madness, right? Right, right? That's what the old man's about. So we can't glory in ourselves right. because that's, that's carnal-minded. We got to glory in what the Most High is doing for us as a nation right. and bringing us back to the knowledge to understand that we are the sons of the Most High. Let's act like that. Right. Let's act like the chosen. Right? Go ahead. Read on. But in lowliness. But in what? Lowliness. Puffed up. Lowliness. Oh, I'm better than you. Lowliness. I got more wisdom than you. Lowliness. Oh, wait a minute, brother. You haven't reached my level yet. Lowliness. So I'm beyond you. Lowliness no, of mind. But in lowliness of mind, like I said, the scriptures will already cut people and make them feel less of a person. Right, right. It would already cut them. You don't got to go and add more right. like I'm such and such and I'm, if you're not dealing with me, <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. It don't supposed to be about that. Right. It's uh, Ecclesiastes 3.18. Go ahead. Uh, the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. And thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Check that out. So not among men. You're going to find favor by the most high. The, when you become great, the greater you are, the more you should be on your feet washing feet. Check that out. You know what I mean? The more you should be on your knees washing feet. Uh, when you dealt with Christ, that's the, most of his time was spent on his knees. man. Right. And, and you, would, you would ask yourself this. Uh, let's point it out again. What did Christ do when those men were over there speaking and they weren't rolling with the other brothers? Right. Did he tell them to go shut them down? Right. What did Saul, I'm repeating it, what you said. What did David do to Saul when Saul was off and he was wicked? Did he go over there and be like, this nigga's off? 
This nigga saw as wicked as hell. Did he do that? Right. No, that's not the character of the knowledge of the Bible of the new man. Right. That's the character of the old man, the thug, that wants to be a damn animal. It was a humility, which is the opposite of the root of envying, which is just pride. Check that out. You know what I mean? It's, it's uh, uh, humility was there. They, he didn't. He didn't have to strive for that position. Because he already knew the Most High had already anointed. He already anointed. You know, it was like it's already there. We're already kings, a nation of kings and priests. There, there is Why you a strive? nation of kings. Right. We, yeah. You're a king. Plural. King, king. We're all kings. Right, I'm know. not yeah. the king, and then you guys are the lesser servants. Right. We're all kings. Yeah, so I don't got to go out when we street teach and pass out flyers with my own phone number on it. Right, you know, right. And, and try to get you over to me because, no, as long as you're being taught Christ, we're all going to join in. We're all going to get paid that same right. penny. Yeah, and, and you know, this is, I know, that this is a message to all Israel because that's what we're supposed to be showing, this character, right. this character love. The, the people, the nations, the world are going to see, Christ said, your love one towards another. Oh. That's what we're supposed to be showing. Right. And like I said, majority of Israel are. But, uh, you know, just to remind young brothers that what we here for we're here we're not here for vain glory we're not here for our own agenda right. uh go uh finish that up but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves check that out now go to ephesians 4 verse 31 ephesians 4 verse 31 i know i'm rushing through it but i we, there's so many scriptures i want to get the scriptures out so y'all can read those things. Go ahead. Ephesians 4, verse 31. Go ahead. Let all bitterness. Let all what? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. Right. Put away from you. Right. So the most I said, let, wait a minute. Read it from the top. Let what? Let all bitterness. Let a little bitterness. All bitterness. Well, you know what? He's wicked, so I can be bitter against him. Right. All bitterness. That, that. Uh, Explain that to me, Israel. How could you, because a person is wicked, you get the point to be bitter towards them? All right, all right. You got to be compassionate. The scriptures say that Christ will have compassion on the simple. Right. I mean, I go back to David, man. When Saul died, he didn't be like, finally, that nigga's dead. Right. You know what I mean? It's about time he got what's coming to him. Right. You know what I mean? When Saul died, he hacked up the messenger to pieces for that and said, you know, oh, you weren't afraid to put your hand on the most high's anointed? Wow. You know what I mean? So Check that out. Even though that brother was wicked, he was still one of the anointed. David never carried that bitterness towards Saul. Check that out. Why? That's powerful. Read it. Read on. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. Wait a minute. All no, malice. go off on everybody on brothers that don't know as much as you. Right. Or brothers that's not on your level yet. Be put away from you. Right. The most I said, put it away. And listen, brothers, listen. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, we're supposed to have that anger. That anger is supposed to reside, because right? we understand. We understand our people are simple-minded and they lost. Our people are already in the ghettos, in the slums, man. They're they, they, they on drugs, crack, dope. They're in every dang religion throughout the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. We know we got the truth. Yeah. It's easy, because just look out there. Look at the standard of the world and the things that our people are clinging to is everything carnal. Anything spiritual, they don't want nothing to do with that. Right, right. Yeah. So it's easy to put a difference between the clean and the unclean. But now we have to come even amongst us and start putting a difference between the clean and the unclean. Brothers that are sincere as opposed to men that are dealing with vain glory or bitterness of anger or wrath right right you know the brother the the the, the poor brother the text it in you know, those in his feelings but uh no we're not we don't sign autographs we don't do that stuff you know what i mean it's like we're, <laughs> we're, why would we have to sign an autograph what, who's going to remember uh, our name he needs die? attention he's calling the brother james harden <laughs> 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 i mean i think it's funny you know what i mean so but you know what? It, it, hey, you're on TV. He feel he, feel he wants to be on TV. Right, I don't know, right. man. Right. So that's that's the vain glory, though. You know what I mean? One day somebody's gonna watch this show and what? Remember your name? No. Nobody's gonna remember you. Uh, when we die, all, all that's gonna be remembered is the words that we spoke. The you know right, I mean? the wisdom of the Most High. The, 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 the scriptures say, "The counsel of the Most High that shall stand." Timothy three verse two, and we're just finishing up on this topic and just just touching on where do these. Where do these things come from? These different doctrines come from? It'd be, it be brothers that are bitter, right. that are angry, 
that didn't like the high priest, that didn't like the brothers that brought the knowledge. So what they did, they went into a closet themselves and they started changing stuff. Right. Like, who are you to change it? Like, first of all, you're supposed to get peers and, and, and men of wisdom and sit down with them and ask them and inquire about the knowledge. Right, right. Now, I'm talking about men that have been in the truth 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Now, guys that just came in a week ago, a year ago, trying to change the knowledge, right. like, you need to go study the basics. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that be that usually is the problem. Like, you got that bitter brother that comes in that he doesn't like none. And, you know, like, uh, we know a brother, he said uh, Ham was white. Like, history, the the uh, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary tells you Ham was the progenitor of the dark races. Right, right. So I'm thinking, like, this is, this is basic knowledge 101. But in his mind, he's trying to disannul everything that the knowledge was saying. So what he's trying to do is disprove it. Right. But you can't disprove the facts. Right. You know what I mean? But it's once again, I'm alone. I'm by myself. I don't want to humble to nobody, to no wisdom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start changing things so it can, I, it can, I, can, I can have control and power. Right. Instead right. of letting the word teach. Right. The word is going to teach and raise our people up. Uh, uh, we got one minute, brothers and sisters. Uh, we thank you all for tuning in. We're here. We're going to be here till the 17th on Saturday, and then we're going to uh, the uh, uh, Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. With that, we thank you for tuning in. We'd like to say shalom. Shalom. shalom.